Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a weekly movie review podcast that comes at you every week, whether you're ready for it or not. Everybody just disappeared. I'm down here by myself. Oh, my God. There they are like ninjas. They came out of the fucking ceiling. The internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. It's dusty in that ceiling. Do you <laughs> clean this place? Are you sure there's not asbestos down here, I've been Colin? up there for 30 minutes. Oh, I'm getting berated. Ninja smoke. <laughs> <laughs> disappears in a cloud of dust. Uh, so, uh, hey, before we get going, why don't we take care of some housekeeping? Yeah. House clippings. House, House clippings. Clipping. House what? clipping. Oh, why don't you go on over to wherever you found us, be it Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Castbox or YouTube, and leave us a comment or a review or a star rating or a thumbs up or whatever you do over there, because all of that helps us get found by more folks like you who are interested in the kinds of movies that we watch tonight. We watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched. American Ninja. So patriotic. This is the first movie named American Ninja. Feels like we would have gotten to this before 1980. Yeah, because it seems so generic, right? 86. Like 86. 1986. Yeah. American, American Ninja. Ninja. Yeah. yeah. When did they start putting American in front of everything? I don't know. I mean, it's been a trend. It seems of, like a Reagan era decade. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe around the time of the wall fell. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Like yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> America. Yeah, very yeah. patriotic. Uh, it's 80, 1986 is when this movie came from. It uh, is a Sam Furstenberg movie. Oh, yeah. We've heard that. That before. name sounds familiar, we, We've done too. a Furstenberg movie on here. I don't Furstenberg know. with American Ninja becomes part of the Saturday Night Freak Show Hall of Fame. Oh. Wall of Fame. Hall of Famer or Wall, wall of Fame? Wall of Fame. Wall? The wall. Yeah, not the hallway. The main, he gets the main wall? He gets okay. the main wall because right. he has directed. Are you ready? I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Breaking two. Electric All right. Oh, shit. shit. He also directed uh, Ninja 3, The, the Domination. Domination. Uh, Excellent. That makes sense. <laughs> Dude loves and American people moving Ninja. moving with their feet. Uh, they're dancing all, or kicking. All canon movies. All Excellent. canon movies, yes. That yes. makes total sense, yeah. actually. <laughs> yep. He's an Israeli-born filmmaker who worked for the... Uh, I mean, well, you know, you have to go back. Was it last year? When did we do the summer of? That Canada? was last summer, yes. But did we Wait, do it two years in a row? Two summers yes, in a row. Yes, we did do it two we summers did. in a row. Yeah, the was... first summer was 2017. The second was 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and the first summer was way more successful. So go listen to that one. And apparently, Colin missed it because he brought another He's one. Right. I know, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, now these the, here's the canon movies that yeah. you got to like uh, showcase on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Mm-hmm. Um. Basically, ninja movies. I mean, because Canon, uh, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. for those of you who don't know, is run by two guys, uh, Menachem Golan and Glo- Golan Yorbis. Mm-hmm. Golan Globus. There oh, we go. There it is. Wait, yeah. Menachem Golan, Golan Globus, yes. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they had a run through the night from the late 1970s through probably the early 90s. I don't even know if they made it that far before they broke up. But in during that time, they made all sorts of spectacular, low-budget movies. And uh, eventually get big budget movies like Cobra Mm -hmm. with Sylvester Stallone and over the top Mm -hmm. with Sylvester Stallone with Mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. Most of their bread and butter was movies that were made featuring Chuck Norris Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Charles Bronson, Mm -hmm. namely all the late later day Death Wish movies Um, and every goddamn Chuck Norris movie. Actually, I don't know if Chuck Norris made a whole lot of movies outside of the canon stable no the majority know. of them were with canon for yeah. sure all the notable ones at least well at least the 80s ones yeah. he made mm-hmm. he made movies for re- real studios mm-hmm. sorry <laughs> for mainstream <laughs> for studios, the bigger yeah. studios uh in the 70s and then uh yeah graduated to canon with the missing in action mm-hmm. franchise and mm-hmm. invasion usa and mm-hmm. firewalker and, uh, firewalker mm-hmm. the delta force which yep. we also watched mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. this uh we did. show we sure did which also starred Steve James, who's the uh, co-star in uh, American Ninja. Steve James. So, okay. So here's, well, even before we get into all this, like, I think Steve James should have been like a bigger actor, right? I mean, based on what like you it. saw here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Especially coming around the corner in that fucking Jeep. 
at the end. At the end. <laughs> where like, he's, got the he's got the bandana. He's got the, what the bandolero, what do yeah. you call it when you have all the, the, uh, bandolero? B- the bandolero with all yeah. the bullets in it. And he's just firing the 50 cal God. or whatever yes. on the back of the, uh, it feels like he could have taken the stuff Carl Weathers turns down, right? That's what like, I, that's what I was why saying. did he not Carl slip Weathers into Jr. that? Yeah. 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 I know. You got to get behind someone. Yeah. It's like, he's the big star. I'm gonna get and then draft off of him, man. Yeah. Just anything yeah. they don't want. Yeah. You're like, I'll take it. Well, I think I, yeah. he... Uh, yeah. What? I was like, he made this movie. I think yeah, he absolutely. did. Well, yeah. because he has personality mm-hmm. and he has charisma. Glad somebody did. Yeah, and he's, right? Yeah. Jesus. right? And he's trying. <laughs> he is trying. Yeah. yeah. He's making the best effort. He it really is. I mean, I've seen him. He's in a movie called uh, To Live and Die in L.A., which is a great movie. Uh, it's more serious than this uh, William Friedkin movie. Um, he teamed up again with Sam Furstenberg and Michael Dudikoff, the star of this film, for uh, American Ninja 2, mm-hmm. The Confrontation, and Avenging Force, which I haven't seen. But based on tonight's viewing, I'm going to watch Avenging Force. I think uh, the Michael uh, Steve James also starred in like the third American Ninja. There's five of these. Jesus. Five. Wow. Well, was he in the third when What's his name? Dudikoff didn't want to come back. He yeah. Was like, I'll take over. Dudikoff came back for the fourth one. Was he in a position to be turning down leading man roles? Dudikoff? Yes. Because, like I said, I looked at his IMDb, and I was like, I know this name. And I looked, and I was like, I haven't seen any of these movies. Why do I know this guy's name? Yeah, why do you know this guy's name? I, I have no idea. I yeah. don't know. I Maybe he's maybe he's become like a running joke on something I listen to, and that's why I know his name. I, do, I have no idea, because I looked at his IMDb, and was like, none of this is familiar. So. I feel like it's probably just because he has such a memorable name. You call like, him the dude. Like, like it's, dude. at some point, yeah. it, you've come across the name, yep. and that's, I think that's how I know it. Because mm-hmm. I agree, I haven't seen anything he's done. Mm-hmm. I, but I think that name has just stood out, because at some point, I've read about it. Because it sounds like he should be an action star, right? Like, yeah. by his name? He'd be like, yeah. The dude to cough. The dude to cough. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's built in, you know. Yeah. He's ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, right. We had the Duke. Now we have yeah. the, the dude. dude. <laughs> cough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I we think... take a, a moment to just go over uh, Sam Furstenberg's filmography? Yeah. I think there's do some it. Titles that should be mentioned here. Do First it. of all, this dude loves ninjas. Oh yeah. He started. I'm gonna I'm gonna head you off. Well, okay. So wait, wait before okay. you do this, uh, there was so Canon created. The ninja craze okay. that that swept America, at least American youth, I believe it. in the early 1980s with a movie called Enter the Ninja, okay. which starred Franco Nero, Christopher George, Susan George, and Sho Kasugi. Sho Kasugi then becomes like, I think, like in this, this subgenre, like he's the Japanese ninja, you know, karate master who everybody associates with these films. Uh, but then... Sam Furstenberg comes on the scene and he makes Revenge of the Ninja, which is the second one ah, with where gotcha. Shokasugi becomes the star. So okay. Shokasugi, and this is the one I haven't seen of the three ninja movies because there's Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja, and then Ninja 3, The Domination. Okay, so, right. So Revenge of the Ninja is the second one. Okay. Yep. All right. So he did two of them. Yeah. Because he did Revenge, and then he goes right into Ninja 3. Yeah. <coughs> well, I mean, if you're good at something, wow. I mean, you know, Cannon's like, uh, you're the ninja guy. Yeah. Ninjas. I wish I could have been here for the Ninja 3 episode. That would have been. We had fun. There was a, yeah. there was a, uh, it's an amazing a trans film. portal it is an am- storm it is... in her bedroom at one point. It's, I can it's honestly say weird. I've never seen a movie like Ninja 3. Like, that is the only it's... movie I've ever seen like that. <laughs> I That's honestly don't one. remember anything about it. Really? It was a possession no. movie, yeah. 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 I don't remember yeah. it at all. You don't remember the sex scene no. where she dumps, like, what, tomato juice or whatever all over herself? No. This is <laughs> And the flying, I, isn't, I, doesn't the sword fly out of the closet? Yes, yeah. it does. It, and then there's the lightning storm yeah. in her yeah. bedroom? It's, oh, yeah. It's Lucinda Dickey from Breaking is, like, the yeah. lead in it. I don't remember this at all. Oh, I don't all. remember much. Well, Sho Kasugi <laughs> is in that, too, because he's the guy he's the ninja who... the beginning? He's the ninja who knows that, you know, the sword was possessed. Uh, and so mm-hmm. he's trying to, to thwart the, uh, the evil ninja. Mm-hmm. Ghost. Evil Ninja Ghost. There, there's mm-hmm. an evil in Ninja, ninja 3, ghost. the domination. Sure. Uh, after Ninja 3, he went into Breaking 2. Mm-hmm. God bless him. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he made American Ninja, Avenging Force, American Ninja 2, some other stuff. He did Delta Force 3, Sweating Bullets. Uh, he also did American Samurai. This guy loved to just be like, let's, get this, let's make everything American. <laughs> All this stuff and just put Americans in there. Cyber, uh, cyborg Cop, 
Cyborg Cop 2. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that will be coming to this show yeah, right? at some Cyborg point. Cyborg Cop. Cyborg I mean, Cop. I mean, you're just finding the right words to put together. Yeah. Like, Is that better? Does it sound better than Robo RoboCop? No. Cyborg Cop. Cyborg Cop. Yeah. Spiders 2, The Breeding Ground. I want to... What? Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's still working, I well, think. he was. 2003 is the last movie he made. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, he reteamed with uh, the dude in Quicksand in 2002. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. What's that? Oh, that's uh, got to be I don't know. He's dressed in a military uniform. I don't even want to click on it to figure out what it is. <laughs> uh, but the, the last title that he made, the whole, the, this is the name, The Interplanetary Surplus Male and Amazon Women of Outer Space. It sounds awesome. Sounds right? like we need to watch it. That's the is title it, of the movie? That's yes. the title of the movie. That's the last thing he did. Last thing on, he directed. Was it on, like, Skinamax? I was like, was it on Cinemax? I mean, it sounds like it. probably. <laughs> this is where Holly's like, I, I think I've seen it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Uh, science professor Harvey Kirk is a sex addict. There it <laughs> is. There it is. One I night sexy alien Amazons kidnap him. Because they need to repopulate, and then I'd have to click more. Yeah, but that's Dudikoff, that's Dudikoff's, Dudikoff's not the lead, it. I assume. He's like well, somebody's yeah. dead in that, in that one. Yeah, by that God time. Damn it, nope, I knew that's, it. That's a Skin and Max movie it. for sure. Yeah. We're going to pay extra to watch so, that. So, fucking Jennifer knew it. Is a, is a <laughs> goddamn amazing. He's an, he's an American. He's a great American. Is what I <laughs> he's Israeli. Thank you. Well, he could be American now. Um, uh, he's an honorary great American. Yeah, you know what? You're right, Colin. He does deserve the wall in yeah. the hallway. That man yeah, goes right. on the wall. Yeah. You know? yep. yeah. Well, we also uh, have inducted, well, Steve James is inducted to, well, okay, I don't know. You'll have, we'll have to put this up. So he was in the Delta Force mm-hmm. and he was in American Ninja. He was also in the Warriors, which we did on this show, but mm. he's, I think, one of the baseball furies or something. It was more of like uh, not, an extra almost. Yeah, thing. because he started off as like a stuntman kind of thing, you know, trying to get into the acting mm. business. So it's like an actorly stuntman kind of thing where it's in the back. I mean, the Warriors is a pretty important movie. That's true. So Does he say anything? I think that goes pretty I far. don't think so. Mm. I don't think he has a speaking But line. if you're in the baseball furies, man, that's like the most memorable gang from that mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. So what's the call? Steve James. It's not like he's in the dumb roller skate gang. Yeah. <laughs> the overall wearing roller skate gang. <laughs> I don't know, hallway. Oh, man. So we need one more That's, Steve James movie? You're so saying he's got two actually, and a half is what you're two saying? Two and a half. Yeah, like. Because yeah. it wasn't like an actual role. Nah, we need another one Yeah, for him. I agree okay. with that. But odds are we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, hopefully he has a limited filmography because unfortunately Steve James passed away at the age of 41 Aww. from uh, pancreatic cancer. So, I mean... It seems like, you know, like you're saying, like when they did, I mean, his name is Curtis Jackson in this movie. And I was just sitting there going like, I think I would have preferred Steve James's action Jackson over Carl Weathers. That's right. I said it. Mm. Is that a bold, bold statement? No, I think I can get behind you on that. Yeah. All right, then. There we go. Through his filmography. There's some ones in here that could make their way onto The Exterminator. Mantis. Oh, Mantis. Mantis was the pilot that I think it was a Fox show. It's like a superhero kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but he always... died before the show was picked up, I uh, think. Yeah. We can always watch Weekend at Bernie's too. He's in that. Apparently. Oh, yikes. <laughs> Man. But yeah, he's got some stuff. We'll, uh, he'll, he'll get there. Okay. Well, as he'll long as you know, there's that promise. Dudikoff, uh, was not a ninja. He was a runway mm-hmm. model, apparently, and then was cast. Is that why he's got that look? You know, that, that explains, explains he's older. He's look. doing fucking Blue Steel this whole goddamn movie. Yes. Like, <laughs> okay, that explains yeah. so much. Yeah, that does explain a lot. Because he's, he's smoldering He's smoldering most the, of the whole movie. movie. Trying to smolder. That also explains why he never looks anywhere near the camera. No. Like, he's look actively looking as far away as he can mm-hmm. from the camera. From the camera or from the other actors? Because there's a both, thing. Both, both. But he's also looking directly at them. Like, I'm looking at Michaela right now. But he's turning their head right. in a way that's like, But he's got yeah. that look like. Yeah. See, but I wonder. See you. I haven't seen enough Dudikoff movies. I don't know if that's a choice. If he's doing, like, this thing where. Because the way I always took it was uh, that he is not direct. Purposely not looking at people in the eye. Because I'm like, he at, toward the end of the movie, he's looking everybody in the eye. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when when the shit's going down, he's looking at people. But mm-hmm. up until then, it's always kind of like, uh, you know, it's like if he looks you in the eye, it's a challenge. This guy can kill you with like his little finger. Right. And so it's like, you know, and there's all these people trying to take pokes at him. Mm. And so he's just kind of won't actually look at them. And then, you know, until. He unleashes the fury no, of the American just, ninja. He's just I think it's habit. His best, his best light. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> I think he's purposely model looking right there. Yeah. That yeah. and like it's just habit. I think he's just that's what he's used to. Like, yeah. oh, there's a camera on me. This is what I do now. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Okay, yeah. with that face in mind, I'm going to drop some uh, some Hollywood uh, uh, knowledge on you here. You mm-hmm. ready for this? So at one point, you're looking at his face. We got him on, on the cover here. Mm-hmm. At one point, Menachem Golan had the rights to Spider-Man. Mm. They were going to make the Spider-Man movie. And guess who was their first choice to play Peter Parker in how, the Spider-Man movie? How old was he? Michael Dudikoff's age. I mean, <laughs> Tobey Maguire was pretty old playing Spider-Man, True. so um, I think he's better for Batman with that chin, man. Like, I think he'd look better in the cowl with than the in the yeah. And no talking. The yeah, chin and no talking. I think he's better suited for Batman. Than That's a Spider-Man. good point. <laughs> but then, if he was Batman, he'd speak. And then but then, like, but oh, you just do the disappointing. Yeah, but you just do the fake like gravelly voice like Christian Bale. You know, I, know I, I was like, I don't know if he would make that choice though. The, the gravitas to do it. Mm. I don't know. Can you see uh, Batman like fucking miming for the camera? Just. I mean, we're gonna have Robert Pattinson as Batman. Allegedly we are really soon, so we're not yeah. that far off from this. Honestly, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, we're comparing. Time is a flat circle, you know. Well, yeah. American Ninja was conceived originally as a film for Chuck Norris. Are you surprised? Not, surprised. Not at all. Chuck no. Norris turned it down. Surprised. He was in a position to be doing that, too? Yeah. That he surprises had, me. Because I, I hear that Canon Films had, like, they had two piles for the scripts they would read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was the Chuck Norris or the Chuck Bronson mm-hmm. pile. And so this one went into the Chuck, or the Charles, uh, God damn it. Chuck Norris pile, mm-hmm. and when he turned it down, because yeah, there was like there, there's a ton of stuff. What do you want to do? You want to do mm-hmm. the Hero and the Terror? You want to do Firewalker? Really you want to do Invasion USA? Charles Norris, isn't he? Charles Norris. <laughs> it is Charles yeah. Norris. Yeah. Chuck Bronson. <laughs> um. So yeah, he turned it down, and they're like, "Well, we need to find the next guy. Who's going to be the American Ninja?" And uh, they found Dudikoff, I think, who had done like some work on Dallas or something like, or some comedies. I don't know. I think he was in uh, the Money Pit Dudikoff. or. Or some bachelor party. Oh, he was, he was in the bachelor yeah. party. I was like, he was not in the money bit. Okay. Yeah, he was in the bachelor party. And then graduated to canon, uh, you know, I mean, because he was going to be the next Jean-Claude Van Damme. Before Jean-Claude Van Damme. I wonder if uh, if he turned down Bloodsport, wouldn't that be something? Mm-hmm. And they're like, here you go. Well, well fine. Did, fine then. We got another guy. They have did, muscles from Brussels. I was going to say, did JCBD take his career? Like, uh-huh. it, did he come yeah, along and they're funny. like, wow, this guy could do the splits on a chair. Fuck the dude, man. He's yeah, out. You I know, love it if, that's if, that's a good point. If yeah. The dude was just like really jealous of, and really bitter <laughs> towards towards Jean-Claude Van Damme. Like yeah. it's just an arch nemesis. Yeah. Because like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like the same. They're cut from the same cloth. You and know, this is around the same time. This is 86 yeah. and Bloodsport was 87. Sounds right. Before mm-hmm. Kickboxer and mm-hmm. all the JCVD mm-hmm. moves. Uh yeah, yeah. But can uh, Dudikoff dance like Jean Claude Van Damme? Probably not. <laughs> That's a good point. I, I don't know. Like, How many he, pleats he, does the dude have in his pants? You know, he True. was not That's cast right. in uh, Breaking too, so we'll never know. <laughs> and Jean Claude Van Damme was no, it was the first, first, first Breaking. Yeah. He dances yeah. in a few of his other movies. Yeah. He does not well. No, mm. not well at all. So in this film, this amazing film. Um, What's this about, Colin? This is about an American ninja named Joe. Okay. Who lives on a military base in the Philippines. Okay. Well, okay, he's been sent there because he has amnesia, because a bomb went off in the jungle. He can't remember anything before this. Why there was bombs in the jungle, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he gets into trouble, goes to reform school. There he nearly kills a man. The judge says either you can enlist in the army or you're going to jail. He says, I'm enlisting in the army. And so he is now, this is where the movie starts. This movie starts like right out of the gate, which I did appreciate about it. Mm-hmm. He's yeah, kind of standing it. around being all sullen. The other army dudes are like, you know, hey, man. Play we, hacky sack. Yeah. I mean, because that's a team building exercise, right? And this guy doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He wants to play with a fucking switchblade over there in the corner. I would rather play with a switchblade than play hacky sack, to tell you the truth. Well, I mean, wouldn't we all? Especially if we were deadly ninjas and knew it. True. What's the point of showing off your skill on, uh, you know? Yeah. No, it, I would argue, isn't that a good way to like exercise your reflexes? Mm-mm. 
He's already he's already no 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 speak. way of the wind ninja. You don't want to actually show other people what you're capable of because you might have to take him. Well, you day. can still go fifty percent. You don't have to go hundred percent. You <laughs> but know, God forbid but... he kills someone with that hacky sack. Then... <laughs> that could happen. I mean, that's the other thing too. You don't want to like put a hacky sack through some guy's head. Right. At least so you don't want to you don't want to showcase your your skills with a hacky sack. So you want to flip around a knife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because okay. you're just like I'm going to clean this knife. All right. <laughs> I was really disappointed he didn't catch that sack on the end of the knife. I thought I for know. sure that was going to happen. <laughs> I, that's too vulgar a display. Of <laughs> yeah, he's not. A, he's not cocky. Yeah. Well, right. Well, be, but this is the American spirit of like 1985, right? You got to be like so awesome, but you don't want to be cocky about it. That's the know, thing. America was pretty cocky. <laughs> Who? I don't think America's America ever not general, been cocky. America. Well, I, but it's I think I, this is the country. way that maybe this is the way that America thinks of itself sure. that, that comes out in these movies. This is the psychology. Yes, that's true. That's, America, that's true. That's true. America is a classic narcissist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, because I mean, you're a lot like Rambo, like that, right? Where it's right? like Rambo's <laughs> awesome, but he doesn't want to actually, like, uh, you know, like, no, I don't want to fight in the war. I know I'm awesome at it, but you know, no, he never actually says that. He hates it. He hates that he's awesome. Um, they're always reluctant, you know, yeah. they oh, gotta, gotta be, be reluctant. reluctant. Hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do all this amazing shit, but you don't ever actually want to do it, mm-hmm. even though that's when you feel the most like actualized, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, well, why would why did you train? all this when you're just like i want to use it no, i can't i can't do it just like well, what the fuck you just you can diffuse the situations the guy who gets trained and, uh, for his entire life and then dies before his first mission <laughs> <laughs> there's probably That's a movie out there feel. for that somewhere or otherwise we should make it um well he's 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 brought into action like very quickly because it, within the couple opening minutes of this movie uh he is tasked with you know driving this convoy with uh is it the general's daughter sergeant's daughter no it's uh the General's daughter. Okay, the Colonel, general's daughter. Sorry. Colonel's, Colonel's daughter. daughter. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> uh, who's played by uh, Judy Aronson from, uh, you may all remember her from Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Yes. Um, she has a, she's a weird science. Weird science, yep. Um, so uh, immediately there's a connection between Dudikoff and the general's daughter, Patricia. Colonel's daughter, sorry. And anyway, they get on a convoy and they go off into the jungle. They're transporting, I think, um, military assets, which are weapons. And they are immediately set upon by gorillas. And Dudikoff, right, doesn't like seeing her get, like, yanked out of a car and pushed Mm. around. So he jumps into action. This inspires all the other military guys to start, like, kicking their captors. And we're like, wow, look at the, you know, the GIs are turning the time. Look at that American spirit. But what they didn't count on. And what, frankly, we didn't count on. I mean, I was kind of counting on it. It's in the title of the movie. Ninjas. Ninjas. Lots of ninjas. Led by the Black Star Ninja. Mm. We know this because he has a little black star on mm-hmm. his cheek. Uh, come out of the fucking bushes and the trees and all that. And so the ninja <laughs> version of tears. Is that what I'm saying? Like, are, uh, tattoos seem like a bad idea if you're a ninja. It's an easy way to identify you, especially facial tattoos. You oh, know, like a facial yeah. tattoo is right. a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. The one thing that's showing when you're a ninja. Yeah. yeah. I feel like <laughs> yeah. it should maybe like be a back tattoo. Yeah. Not a face right. tattoo. You know. But, but then how would we see that he was the he was the highest rank? Give he him a different colored bandana star. or something. Yeah. You know? Right. Like, yeah. Which is what you do, but yeah. not in this movie. Black Star in the face. Mm-hmm. You're the Black Star Ninja. That's his name. Mm-hmm. Black Star Ninja. Mm-hmm. Black Star Ninja works for. Uh, Ortega. Ortega, the Frenchman. <laughs> yep. A guy who is unintelligible through this whole movie. Good Can't understand a yeah. word he's saying. <laughs> I understood every word that he said. How many he, times have you seen this movie? Twice. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, what? We're he, all watching it for the first accent. time. So. He has a thick you, you French to, accent. Get in there and be like, oh, he, okay. It. It's it's not so much the accent as there's no enunciation happening. That guy does not open his mouth when he talks. No. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. he's one of those sinister like Miami Vice kind of villains. He wears the white suits, which you always know is the guy in the white suit is yeah. the rich guy who's you know got some sinister yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. He apparently owns the island that they're on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they wear and, white because they know if they get it dirty, they can just get it replaced. Yeah, and it's very hot. So he's actually the smartest uh, guy there. The fucking ninjas are all running run, run yeah. around in black in the heat, and he's wearing white. To, yeah, he's very cool. And it's the 80s, so, you know, yuppie greed and all that. Yep, yeah. Yuppies wear white. He is, uh, he's like, uh, so he's a gun runner, Ortega, right? Yes. But Ortega, is, so the main plot of this movie, the bad guy's plot, is Ortega is trying to steal <clears throat> the weapons from the American base, mm-hmm. siphon them off. He has all these, like, you know, 
accidents or raids happen on the roads and all the weapons are being taken back to his um, warehouses where he's going to sell them to a pair of buyers, international buyers, right? He's got a lot of money riding on this. Will the American Ninja completely destroy and uh, disrupt his plan? You know what? He has to prevent this from happening. Hmm. A private army of ninjas. Mm. He does. A playground of ninjas. I think yeah. that's what a group of ninjas is called. It's like a called. ninja daycare. A playground of ninjas. <laughs> it is All like ninja colors. daycare. Yeah. It is. Yeah. They're oh, even divided up into their color like groups. Little kid ninjas running around yeah. and just flipping through. And there should have been. Oh, my God. That would have been great. It's, well, like, what? it's like kinder care, but ninjas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the idea that it's a ninja it nursery. does kind of look like it because they're all color coded. <laughs> and like the equipment's color coded, yeah. too. It's all yeah. primary yeah. colors, like mm-hmm. a nursery school. You got your blue ninjas, your red yeah. ninjas, yellow ninjas. This is the only time we see these colored ninjas. Mm-hmm. I'm disappointed in that. To be honest, so am I. That at the climax, it wasn't like you have to fight through the blue ninjas before right. you can fight it's the red ninjas. It's a rainbow of ninjas. Like, I want a rainbow of ninjas. Yeah. 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 And they all have, they should have all had a specialty too. Yeah. yeah. Like these are the bone arrow ninjas. Yeah. These are, the, these are the nunchuck ninjas. ones. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, that right? would have been yeah. so great. More interesting, you you ponied up enough money to have like different colored ninjas in this scene. Why don't you use them in the rest of the movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Come they on. all work together somehow. Like it's a big strategic thing where like this person acts at this point and does this action. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is the, so the cool. remake we're talking yeah. about that we're going to do. Are they combined to form a cool color pattern? Or some what if they made like a human pyramid, you know, and did some Something cool like shit? Yeah. yeah. I would like them to combine to form a giant ninja. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Power Rangers. Right. <laughs> somehow. I just want humans forming to form a giant ninja that he's got to fight. <laughs> this is a. Good idea. That's not a bad idea. I think you can actually <laughs> do it. the Canon 2 Kind of like, well, what, yeah, the pyramid thing like uh, that skiers do or something like yeah. that. But it's all ninjas, so imagine they all have swords, you know? Right. I mean, so it's like the 12-armed, you know, ninja. Yeah. And they move as one, and he's got to fight him and knock him right? down. Or what if they make like a giant foot? Ninja 6. So then they literally are the foot, like a ninja turtle. Or they, yeah, they like or the giant hand. fists yeah. and punch him yeah. and shit. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, there you go. The hand is Daredevil, right? I think so, yeah. The yeah, the foot is, is yeah, it's the hand. It's the hand. Because yeah. the Ninja Turtles the is a, it's the foot. foot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the foot. Yeah. foot. Um, this could be These are the fist. Ideas. Yeah. Um, Shit. The fist. But I love, awesome. I love seeing like you know guys with private armies that have ninjas out in the backyard, yeah. like you know, repelling down stuff, kicking the shit out of you know, going through the little just constantly practice. Yeah. yeah. And in this one, it's serious too because if you can't beat Black Star Ninja, he'll kill you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kills the students. But apparently it's a very giant honor to be killed by that man. So, Well, I mean, you know, yeah, because he's, that means you're killed by the best. (laughs) (laughs) Taken down by the best. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But if he's going to be killing people in his training program, they should have little kid ninjas going to keep keep up with the people he's killing. They're going to run out. They're going to run out. Well, this is the other thing that happens in this movie is, I mean, before Dudikoff can actually take on the uh, evil uh, gun runners, he has to earn the respect of the his fellow GIs because they hate him initially, which, you know, an act of heroism at the beginning, he actually does save uh, the Patricia mm. from the uh, the ninjas, right? And Yeah, the, I still don't really understand why they actually got mad at him. Because four guys died. So yeah, basically they're like, if really you would have just... Fault. Yeah, but see, this is what we find out later is that both of his commanding officers are in league with Ortega, yeah. unbeknownst to him. So, you know, initially it's like, yeah, it's like you, if you just would have stood there and done nothing and let them take the shipment, our four guys would still be alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But because, you know, you had to do something, the four guys are dead. That's what the guys in the base think, mm-hmm. but they want to court martial him because he fucked up their plan. He was supposed to, you know. Yeah. Um, but so how does he um, integrate himself with the uh, other officers? Fights, actions, reason. Because this is the way that you integrate yourself right. with. Well, uh, Jackson kind of, uh, they don't like him. So Jackson comes up and challenges him. Yeah. Like you and me, Come buddy. On, fight. Fight me. Fight. I hear you're a badass. Some people think they're a badass. They take his wrench and they throw it away. And they're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Really taunting him there. I think this is a great thing. Of course, during that fight scene, it's awesome. Steve James taking on Michael Dudikoff. At some point, Michael Dudikoff puts a bucket on his head. <laughs> so he can't see anything, and he's still able to. Well, he doesn't really, like, land any blows. No, he just catches. No, he just flips him around a lot and catches his 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 blows, and, and it's just like, hey, yeah, you can't touch me. 
And at the end of it, Steve James is like, okay, man, I'm wrong. You beat me. And then in the next scene, they're best buddies. And best then they buddies. are more like giving are, each other noogies and everything. Yeah. And Steve James is willing to like completely stand up for this guy, like, you know, in front of the, the top brass, because like he proved himself in that fight. That was the linchpin key moment. Yep. It's like he knew. This guy's all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. Obviously. He didn't say much, Joe. No. I don't really understand that. Colin, if I just punched you square in the face, would you be like, this girl's all right? I think She's it's more good. of a guy thing. Is I think it a guy guys, thing? I think because guys. A guy slash military <clears throat> thing. Well, no, I think, but there's something with guys, like when you have, there is like some kind of. Uh, an alpha situation. Yeah, I think yeah. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And somehow like, yeah, there's like an initial tension that like once you, I guess, beat the other one, it's like, oh, okay, we're cool now. It happens on the playground all the time. Yeah. Dudes up. just fight it out and be like, all right. Yeah, and then afterwards they're friends. So hang out. Then they be, can become best friends because they had that moment where they like, you know, no, I know, yeah. don't get it. No, <clears throat> no, I don't get it. So then, I'm, gonna right. hate, I'm gonna hate someone more if they hit me. We're not saying it's smart. <laughs> we're just saying it happens. I'm saying, yeah, but this is like part of that reptilian thing. Uh, right. You know, evolution has brought us to this point. Um, you'll live longer. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a question about uh martial arts movies in general but specifically this one mm. applies to why does the the because we watch a lot of what i call white guy karate movies yeah here where white it's like you do. yeah it's it's a it's a it's white a guy that is like ridiculously good at karate but learn from someone of color usually yes and uh th- why is it that that white guy in these movies is always from like a broken home situation? Because he had to turn to. That's why. Because he's got. So to, he's so, lacking something, so he had to turn to karate. So you can't have stability in your life and be good at karate. It's one nope. or the other. This is why there's got to be trauma in your past if you're like a comedian or something mm-hmm. like that. It's yeah. It's, it's got to be some like, motivating factor. Yeah. Everyone's got to come from a broken home in a martial mm-hmm. arts movie. Yep. No, because yeah. why did they learn martial arts in the first place? It's Everybody a, else plays. They can't football. just have a hobby. No, no, no. No, it's a coping mechanism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> there's football and regular. Nobody sports who ever took karate as a hobby ever amounted to anything. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Ever. The kids who had normal lives played soccer. But why? Why can't you be normal and and take martial arts classes? Why? I, they, I just they don't even have I, the interest the, in the it. The intersection of it, I don't understand. It's after you get your ass kicked by the one kid who's just a jackass. You mm. don't end up being friends with him on yeah. the playground. And you're like, you got to defend yourself against him. Karate classes. Then you become a master black right. belt karate, and, and then, then you, you go, never want to use it. Then you, yeah, because that's the whole thing. You can't ever use it. Until one day, right? The Russians invade or yeah. whatever. One day. And that's all you're, you're waiting for. Yeah. Though, one day. I know, because that's the other thing, too. You know, it's like, they, imagine the preparation that has to go along with this. Because you have to learn how to drive, like, every kind of vehicle that is known to man. So the when that day happens, mm-hmm. like, not only can you employ your fighting skills, but you can also fly the plane, take the helicopter off, uh, drive the 18-wheeler. Any weapon that shows up. I'm just yeah, thinking. that too. You got to have. Yeah. I mean, this takes a lot of preparation to become an American. Ninja. For something that just, could possibly never happen. Right. Just thinking about the martial arts movies we've watched with even in the past year or two on yeah. here. <laughs> none of those characters have had like a complete family. They either have right. one parent or no parents. Yeah. This is who the audience is speaking to also. I mean, this is, these are the people who gravitate yeah. toward those films, I suppose. Because karate, karate builds structure and discipline, mm-hmm. and they need those things because and, uh, of their past trauma. Because their life has been crazy up yeah. this point, and they want a sense right. of control. Yeah, it's it's a <laughs> they it's want a way. Control. Yeah, this is their way of finding peace. Mm-hmm. All right, that works. That's the. Secret. I'm just saying, there's a there's like 30 people in the karate class. Some of them have to have both parents, right? Yeah. <laughs> But they're always the ones holding the mats while the other guy. Kicks yeah, them. but they're the ones <laughs> who are getting job. beat up in at school or whatever. So yeah. Um, so uh, there is a romance subplot uh, that, you know, Joe is, uh, there's like a little, you know, he takes her for a ride on the bike. He has to, I mean, everything is like action in this movie, which is actually kind of uh, to its benefit. Mm. Like he doesn't just, you know, walk off the base to go pick the girl up. He's got to drive, you know, uh, perform a stunt, to get out jump over the wall on the motorcycle, you know, pick her up on the motorcycle. Everybody in this movie, they don't like, you could just take a, couple steps back and do something or the, you could but, just climb up on the top of a truck but they like vault and do somersaults basically and this movie has no chill no none. none none at all i was surprised for a canon movie the number of choreographed fight scenes that were in this i was very surprised by that because it did not seem cost effective at all i know well this could be in 86 though this is the post uh stallone era 
they could have that still money, own yeah. money and be like, yeah, you want you want car explosions? There's a fantastic one in this film oh my God. where a truck goes. Well, we thought because it's the shot of the guy. He's like going off the road. They cut to close up him going. Rah! And you're like, oh, my God, he's going over the cliff. Right. No, he's he goes down a hill. You're like, well, it wasn't so bad. Second later. Hits like this tiny a little tiny stick tree. of a it's tree. Sapling. It's a sapling. Right. It's still green. <laughs> yeah. Car, car explodes. Yeah. Explodes. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, Sergeant. Oh, it was fantastic. A military car. Yeah. Explodes Which on a all sapling. have the gas tanks in the front, apparently. Yes. And uh, they were built with bombs in them. I don't know if you guys know yeah. this. They yeah. just had bombs in them. It's yeah. weird that they would do that. Yeah. But... Instant self destruct yeah. on all military vehicles. That like was the, great. What, the Corvair or whatever that car is that would just explode <laughs> when you drove it. Yeah. The uh, the Pinto, was it the Pinto that had that? the Gremlin? I think it was. The Which Cor- one? I think it was the Corvair. I think it was the Corvair. Okay, I'm trying to think back to the Beavis and Butthead episode. I was thinking they... about Fear. It's in Fear. Is it in Fear? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Marky Mark drives a, mm-hmm. a Corvair. Right. Yep. But yeah. it didn't explode. No, but then they talk about it. She's like, "Isn't this one of those cars uh, that exploded?" Uh-huh. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, that's why I like it so much." After the roller coaster <laughs> of love. In that movie. <laughs> oh God, yeah, Fear! It's... Check out our Fear episode. Yeah, we have some thoughts on that movie. We've watched, watched a lot of movies. We, you can go back. Like over 300 now. Just keep on making that plug. So in American Ninja, uh, I mean, this guy goes through, and as far as action scenes, we get, you know, the initial uh, truck, uh, like, ambush. Yep. We get, um, he has to go and uh, take a truck. Well, you know, because the, the bosses want him dead, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're in league with Ortega. So he's got to take a truck full of munitions to a warehouse where it's a ninja trap. Ninjas are coming out of barrels. Ninjas are dropping ninja uh, uh, nets on him. Ninja nets. The net, man. Oh, ninja nets. The net yeah. was super inefficient. It took four people to operate it. It didn't and even he work. Went, shh, shh, yeah. Because he had a sword at that point. Why not just use one of those nets with the weights on the corners that like wraps around them? The ninjas them? were the weights. Oh, but that's not, <laughs> that's that's not a good use of ninjas. They didn't have the net cannon gun or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah. Log? No, but I love bad uses of ninjas. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's great. I want ninjas doing shit. Just like, ah, I've never seen a ninja do that before. These ninjas are like disposable ninjas. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because you have like your private army of ninjas. I want to see the five minutes before he showed up where they're just like trying to climb up into the rafters. And handing the net up to each other. Right. Just like, uh, yeah, but they're like super efficient. You ever seen them do anything in this movie? They're just like, they come to a fucking tree and away they go up the top of the thing. They got to get up on top of a building. Like, they're there. They were were waiting at the top of those coconut trees. Mm -hmm. That's right. For a long time. We don't know how they got there. Yeah. It's amazing. There's one guy who can't climb very well. And there was five minutes of him just like, (laughs) what's the appeal? Of ninjas because I mean I even now know. there is like I think a couple years ago maybe we mentioned this on one of our previous ninja episodes go back and listen um some was it some uh I, I think it was a joke or something like that some Japanese village somewhere said they were looking for ninjas I don't know and like people from all over the world were like applying oh, no. to try and be a ninja ninjas are still like a huge deal. Although you can't get Ninja Magazine anymore. No, no more Ninja Magazine. Yeah. yeah. No Ninja TV shows. Show Kazugi was in Ninja Assassin, right? Which was only a couple of years ago and was the oh, okay. Wachowski brothers uh, had produced. Wrote oh, yikes. Out. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> no. They haven't done a good movie in a long time, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. But Ninja, there's something like, you, and, and as a kid, I always wanted to see like certain things, I guess, from Ninja movies, right? I wanted to see them do the things that they advertised in these, you know, magazines and what you conjured in your mind. The ninja has. What what do you imagine a ninja doing? I think I imagine a ninja with lasers shooting out of, you know, like the little gun pellets, throwing the smoke bombs and them exploding, having throwing stars, right? And the knives and all that shit. Yeah. And that's, I think, why this movie was checking boxes that I haven't seen in any of the other ninja movies. Because, yes, in this movie, a ninja has a hidden laser. He does. In the last 15 minutes, you're just like, I didn't know ninjas could do that. And you say that a lot. Yeah. They can oh. shoot flames out of their hands. Yeah, apparently. They have the flamethrower. This is right. the ninja magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you know that can be built into him somewhere. He, right. That's just like, all no, right, I'll take that. No, he's hiding all this shit for the time. He's the Black Star Ninja. He, he's ready for all one this. One of them literally disappears. Yeah. It literally disappears. True. Didn't they say something about there being ninja magic right before that scene happened? They yeah, but he was talking. Talk- yeah. It was the, whatever, the six symbols of whatever. This is ninja magic to, you know, yeah. cloud men's minds. And- yeah, he, yeah, they went through all their 
abilities. Right. Yeah, so it's, it is like the ability a to turn supernatural invisible thing. to yeah. your opponent. And he mm-hmm. did it. Yeah, it's because I think like to they die. don't mean literally, but then later in the movie, he literally, literally vanishes literally. and then appears in a puff of smoke. Now, this is the ninja master that taught uh, Joe Armstrong, mm-hmm. the, the American ninja, everything that he learned about being a ninja. Mm-hmm. Apparently, when he was like six years old and before the explosion went off. So, okay, hold on. So I got this. So Joe's an orphan? Yep. Apparently. Okay. His parents could be alive. He was raised in the jungle somewhere in the Philippines by a Japanese soldier who apparently didn't know that the war was over, who found this kid, taught him the way of the ninja, Mm -hmm. right? Until they were separated in this explosion that went off because somebody was uh, bombing the road or bombing to make a road. Right. And so Joe was found taken one place and uh, the old master is found and he becomes a silent gardener for Ortega, where basically he's just biding his time and creating nice floral arrangements. Apparently as he waits, everyone's playing the long con and for his moment. Yeah. (laughs) The landscaping was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It It was to his credit. Yeah. He's doing a good job. All I saw was him in a pool messing with plants. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any landscaping. Really, Look at the, he made the mountains and all that stuff. He made the mountains. He he sculpted them. (laughs) I was more make ta- the mountain, Sean. I was, more I, mean, at, I was more looking at the flowers, but sure, he made yeah. mountains. Yeah, mountains. That's <laughs> sure. part of the landscaping. Yeah. Carved the top off of this one so it was more scenic. So, uh, molded, Colin, I think. Colin, is that what Colin we're is going? being silly tonight. Uh, well, we You're were watching American person, Ninja. I, I'm in the in the mood of this the movie. Is a silly movie. You're right. There are laser ninjas in this and he's got but that's fantastic and, i mean come on i mean like, i liked it. it yeah if you're gonna do ninjas it's better than just having like them do like kicking and sword play right you're gonna bust out some lasers i'm all for it yeah and flamethrowers bring it on oh yeah i, I like want to see kind of ninjas ninjas like scurrying across uh well, the this power one. lines and that's how you do it you just kind of mm-hmm. shimmy oh, yeah. across yeah. shimmy and there's the a lot of ninja run. action in this movie yeah. like uh yeah I don't know. I, when I saw Enter the Ninja, there's ninjas, but it just wasn't as cool. It's better than I've Miami seen, Connection, I'll tell you. Right. That. Miami Connection, <laughs> uh, Ninja 3, The Domination, right? That was You're more possession like, than Ninja, but yeah. But there's nin- the ninjas in that actually behaved like, I don't know, karate. You know, like the they employed the martial arts. Yes. They did the, you know, whatever. They drop out of the ceiling or, you know, do the Batman thing because he's basically like the glorified 21st century, you know ninja extraordinaire yep. right batman mm-hmm. i mean it's better if you wear a big black yeah. sure. bat costume mm-hmm. sure um but yeah this one actually has like ninjas doing all that crazy ninja shit i'm just being met by a bunch of faces or, I, mean, or, or I, like very I mean i can't tell if you're like you're absolutely right colin this was the pinnacle of ninja uh filmic cinematic I don't know, man. I don't if watch ninja do, movies unless I'm here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the, This is the only time I watch I ninja movies. So. They do a lot of new ninja things. I, I will give you that. But the classic ninja stuff, like fighting, yeah. kind of falls short. How so? It's not great. Because of? it's The choreography kind of sucks, and it's slow, and they're, none of them are very good at it. Okay. Because they do inefficient yeah. things like four people yeah. on a net. So it's like if if the mar- if the ninja stuff had been like really cool and I was like oh my god they're really fast and they're really kicking ass in addition to like the lasers and the fire and stuff I would have been like Jesus this is fucking awesome uh, I think they bust uh-huh. out the I magic see. stuff yeah. too late in the game I bring agree. that into the movie I agree with earlier that. yes I agree. There it kind of comes lasers out of nowhere and flamethrowers way earlier in this movie yes. yeah. see, I, don't know. I think point. I'm on the other side of that because if you if you blow all that stuff early like what you know you have to kind of build to it well I'm not saying you do it all you they, go and then it's like they credits. waited till but the last all fight at once yeah. in the last like 15 yeah, minutes the, I'm saying spread that out because they didn't the movie, they like didn't build to it it was just like all of a sudden it happened it was like the guy was like hey you know we have magic powers right and then the next scene it was everybody using their magic powers and that was it you're still saying it's like we can turn invisible. Yeah, but I didn't see any of the uh, Black Star Ninja stuff being magic. He had, like, I mean, we saw he had the dart gun on the wrist. He had the mm-hmm. flamethrower on the other wrist. Mm-hmm. He apparently had okay, the they're, laser they're on the gadget other. gadget enhancements, he, yeah, whatever gadget, you want to yeah, call yeah. it. Yeah. It didn't come in until the last 15 minutes, no matter what. Gadgets so. are, he yeah. vanished. Yeah, he, that's not a gadget. The other guy vanished, yeah. that's true, yes. yeah. 
He goes invisible. So he that's a possibility. Yeah, I agree. It's probably like Batman toys, but Everybody he fucking vanished. Dead. Yeah, <laughs> disappeared. It's ill-defined either way. So yes. it, you know, that's a yes. big part of the problem. Right. I just wish they had ill-defined it earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, before that, you have uh, the whole skull dudgery, right? Of the skull duggery. Skull duggery. Skull duggery. 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 Of uh, you know. The Steve James, I'm sorry, Michael Dudikoff, Steve James, and Judy Aronson discovering to their horror that the commander of the base is actually in league with uh, Ortega, mm-hmm. and uh, they try to get arrested. I think he does get arrested. He has to get broken out of jail. Uh, there's several chases. Uh, he has to fight the ninja of Master in the uh, whatever old tank graveyard or whatever that they have going on there. The other side of the military base they haven't filmed on yet. This is yeah. all one location. This, this is when like the whole way through the movie, it's like, you know, uh, Ortega's always, we have to kill him. Have your men kill him. You kill him. And so this is like the first time that they like show up together and have to fight each other, which yeah. I thought was kind of, as I was watching, I'm like, Oh, this is kind of dramatic. This is the first time, like, these two guys who are apparently, like, at about the same skill level. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because the American Ninja is, like, far superior to all the other uh, run-of-the-mill, uh, you know, ninja training guys. Yes. But now he's met his match. And, like, how are they going to square off? Because, and unfortunately, that ends with a draw, right? Because the army guys show up and shine the, the spotlight on them. Right. It's in and the dark, you know. that. <laughs> yeah, that gives uh, Dudikoff the opening to escape. That was pretty good because they were doing some like rooftop running and jumping around and everything, and it was pretty well choreographed. A couple of flips at the same time. I enjoyed that. Well, the action, I think, like it does suffer in comparison to like you know, I mean, a modern a way a modern movie would be done. I mean, obviously, like you're know, you're looking at something like a James. Yeah. I kept thinking of, like how would a James Bond movie? Yeah, well, like, and- cut together this action. Especially like the big chase scene in the truck. There's like yeah. the because the, uh, the guys with the missiles they they uh, in the back of the truck they take off and Dudikoff has to get onto the truck. Uh, you know he's on a motorcycle. They're blasting through all this uh, stuff in a Martin Market Square. He gets uh, has to Indiana Jones his way underneath the truck. You know, like there's all this stuff happening, and I'm like, it seems kind of. I mean, I guess this is what Holly's talking about. I don't know if it's the choreography, the editing. Or just the tempo mm-hmm. of some of that stuff. It's more like an '80s tempo. Definitely, you know, it is. we've changed all that now. So that's why I'm like, I don't know if we can go back and look at what they were doing then compared mm-hmm. to because you have to compare it to like Predator. Yeah. You know, like the tempo of Predator or the tempo of a Rambo movie or something. Mm. One of its contemporaries. You know, if you compare it to something now, well, it's like yeah, somewhere along the line, we got we better with our ninja out, fighting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, after the 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 um, Chinese influence of um, you know, like the Jet Lees and the Jackie Chans yeah. and the you know. protector. But there, is, but there is something about the <laughs> there is something about the focal point that I'm just like I feel like we missed a lot. Like things, cool things might have been happening, but we just didn't catch it. No, anybody? I don't know. Um, is it specific? I mean that like. Like in the in the fight scenes, there there's moments where, like people get killed, and I'm like, I don't know if that I actually saw them get killed just now. Mm. You know what I, I mean? Like, what, yeah, I, I, I feel like I don't know if it's the editing. I don't there's know. Also, what, no blood in this. There's movie, also so no that blood. That's true. That's very little. But I yeah, feel like this. Yeah. yeah that, but that's that is a response to the times it was made again because this is when yeah. the MPAA was like cracking down on all these movies for like being too violent. Mm-hmm. You know, nunchucks were like illegal in most yeah. of the united states at some point because yeah. basically the idea is that kids are going to see these kids doing ninja moves mm-hmm. on other people and they're going to do it and actually seriously injure their playmates mm-hmm. and so it's like you know so they wouldn't show i mean most of the i guess what you're saying yeah. most of the uh impacts people getting sliced you know you see the knife and you hear the the uh sound effect but there's no like blood spraying. No. Nobody turning around with like their guts hanging out or anything. There's it's a just lot like, of impact. Guy goes down, but none of no uh, aftermath. Let's say. Yeah, if yeah. you watch Ninja Turtles two, that was the one that happened after the reaction to the first one. And the first one, everyone's like, it's too violent to be a kids movie. So in the second one, they don't actually use any of their weapons. Right. Yeah. Um, and they actually like don't use nunchucks at all. They use like link sausages instead of nunchucks, and it's like yeah. really cartoony that mm-hmm. movie. Like especially big. compared to the first one, it's and that was like. 
early 90s oh, that 1990. first time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yo-yos instead of any so, weapons. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, they don't use their their weapons are literally on their backs the whole movie and they never use them. Mm-hmm. It's insane. They, they weaponize donuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure pizza like, too. Yeah. I mean cuz this doesn't really feel like an R-rated movie. I think it is. R? Is it? It is. Rated R. I don't know why. Wow. Well, because of the uh, if you if a kid comes to see it Right, they sure. will uh, emulate the horrible, awful ninja violence. Ninja violence. I'm sure it's R for ninja violence. Well, I think it, there were some fucks in the dialogue, but it was yeah, like they're, they're covered up by like noise. Like, yeah, I but it was like secondary anything. characters off the, you know, like or oh. it was just under their breath, like yeah. it's fucking thing, you know. But it's not like a major dialogue point set into yeah. camera, it's really so not. it doesn't register. Right. So it feels like kind of like a clean, you mm-hmm. know, movie where it's like, and there's no, uh, you know, I, I don't know, no sex and nudity. No, there was no a lot of insertion violence. of weapons in this movie. I will say that. Oh, I suppose that's true. I think that's why, because they're yeah, showing like dudes are like getting stabbed. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of stabbing. A lot of stabbing. <laughs> that's probably why. Right? I think so. But would you call it, that it graphic look, violence? It, it feels no. more graphic than mm-hmm. more, other ninja movies. There's always that. You see the slice, but the you see it from the side where you're just looking at the back of the dude, and he gets sliced in the gut. And he's like, "Oh!" And you don't, you know, see anything getting cut or anything like that. Dudes are getting like fucking stabbed in this movie, so it's a little more graphic than usual, I would say. Yeah, I was kind of surprised at certain things. It's like, "Whoa, all right, we're stabbing dudes." Actually, wait, was this? There was a scene at the beginning in that opening truck thing where there wasn't there like a. a... Like five a dudes pickaxe on the ground, and the dude yeah. like fell on it. Oh. Okay, yeah, that yeah. was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. Throwing like, the oh, screwdriver shit. into someone was pretty good too. Yeah. yeah, but like, there's no blood when any of those things happen. So no. it's like right, that's... and there's yeah. no even like sound effects to like squish sound effects or anything either. No. It's just it just happens. <laughs> but like it a is thud. a brutality in some <laughs> I think so. some ways. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then that goes against what we were. We we're just making a case. But that, that was like, all in that first fight. Yeah, Mostly. but there were, there were several of them later on where it felt like, you know, it's like, ooh, ooh, he fucked that guy up, you know, or whatever, sticking people and, like, you well, stick them, then that's you move saying. the knife like you're cutting through the, you know. That's what I'm saying. It happens throughout the movie. I think that's that's definitely why they got an R for this movie, because a lot of sticking. I think that's why. Sorry. A lot of stabby stabby. A lot of stabby stabby. Mm-hmm. What you expect from a movie with... Uh, has a bunch of ninjas at the end of this film when all hell breaks loose because the um, American military who was in with Ortega, who Steve James is now the head of apparently. Well, even corner. the Colonel, the Colonel is there. Yeah. yeah. Like the Colonel changes his mind. Yeah. Probably we don't know if he lives. Well, or probably because they took his daughter. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, no, but yeah, but you're right. Yeah. Well, he changed his mind before that. Because Ortega kidnaps his daughter as basically an insurance policy. Mm-hmm. But he does change his mind before that. This yeah. is a mistake. We're not you running know. him. Yeah. 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 And the guy's like, I've got $4 million invested in this. We're not fucking stopping. Because yeah. it was under the pretense, I think, that the colonel was in on this because he thought that they're arming the rebels. Right? This is one right. of these things Stop where- Stop communism. Yeah. And so even though it's off the books, we're giving them the weapons so they can stop the spread of communism in this part of the world, mm. but the arms dealer is like, I'm doing it for the money. Right. And you're not fucking up my deal. Mm. And so then, uh, that leads to this massive, crazy, uh, confrontation where the, uh, American Jeeps led by Steve James on the 50 Cal ride into camp. We got ninjas all over the place, uh, attacking these two guys. Cause mm-hmm. basically it's, uh, it's, uh, the American ninja and his sensei. Right. 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 The wise and master who ends up taking a uh, a knife for his pupil. Mm-hmm. Well, they have a father son relationship, I think. Yes. At some point, he because calls him father. He yeah. helps him recover his memories of like, you remember when you were a child and I taught you all this stuff. Right. <clears throat> what, and that's how he that's recovers his magic. That's how he recovers his memories. Like, do you remember? And then he remembers. Well, he yeah. gives him that's the tea. It. The tea. Uh, I think, like, that the, yeah. He didn't drink yeah. that tea. I didn't drink, see him drink that like, tea once. Did you remember how he made this tea? This is a special ninja magic <laughs> That's it. tea nah, that recovers. I'm still gonna, all he, he said is, do you say, remember? He did say that I blocked your memory from, yeah. you know. Oh, boy. He did. Yeah. Right? What What was the whole deal with that? He said. He did. He's like, I, he's like, I allowed you to not remember so that oh, you wouldn't be before. hurt. So he yeah. wouldn't remember what happened yeah. to his yeah. family and parents and stuff. Yeah. Until the time when you would be able to, you know, chase down your destiny, fulfill your destiny. And then he gives him the tea, and he remembers just, everything. He's like just, yeah. self-actualized human at that point. It just felt like they they crammed that in there mm-hmm. out of nowhere and real real quick. They're like, yeah. 
They needed like a like a wise old mentor character, yeah. and they're like, "Oh fuck, we gotta find room for this." Yeah, just squeezed it on in there. He did turn. He what? I said he did turn invisible though. He, he did, did, yeah, he because really he's did. achieved like you know Yoda. He's level. achieved the glow. Um, the, <laughs> at the end, the bad guys uh, during this deal, you know, there's a lot of uh, shooting with your uh, what do you call those? The not the AKs, M16s, no, the little one, the Uzi. Uzi. Thank you very much. Yeah. A lot of Uzis, um, but they bring in a helicopter. I'm always impressed when a movie of this scale yes has a helicopter. Yeah, because yeah. you know, like that's like that's Chekhov's helicopter, right? It's like you're not just bringing this in here for show. Something's no, gonna happen. You're gonna blow that thing up. <laughs> There's a stunt on this helicopter, which is not bad, uh, where the ninja jumps on the front of this thing as it's taking off mm-hmm. in the days before wire removal. So like, that guy's actually hanging on there. Yep. Take that, mm-hmm. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Hanging on the skiff. Is that what we call it? The rudder? Sure. Or whatever. The skiff. Sure. The rudder. On the, what do you call it? The thing that a helicopter lands on. It's legs. It's landing yeah. legs. It's legs. <laughs> it's landing legs. It's landing yeah. legs. Obviously. <laughs> There's a fight. I'm not, right I'm not big on the anatomy of a helicopter. I don't no, know what no, it's called. No, it's called the we'll see. Legs. We'll figure this stuff out. Then we'll be experts yeah. on uh, helicopters. And the end Someone of this movie. Someone just shut this podcast off. They're like, landing legs, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bastards. It. It's like These they're yelling idiots. at us right now. <laughs> right in, if you know what it is. Um, but this gives Steve James, because again, I think this is the thing. When you're transporting uh, you know, rocket launchers in your truck and selling them to the enemy, at some point that rocket launcher is going to get used. Hopefully. In mm, the movie. I would hope so. I wonder what his plan was. Because uh, the ninja, Joe, and the girl are on the helicopter. Mm-hmm. Steve James is pointing the uh, the rocket launcher at the helicopter. He's like, get off, man. Get off. Here it comes. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, He's what? Waiting. Is- He's waiting to take a shot. Like a sniper. Okay, but didn't uh, Joe, like, kick Ortega off to his death, kick him off of the, uh, the helicopter? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, because they're both Ortega's hanging out the side, like trying to shoot underneath the. I honestly can't remember if he kicked him off or if, or if they because they jump off of him. Oh yeah, they does yeah. kick him, doesn't he? Yeah, he kicks him off, and then right. they jump off, and then he takes down whoever's driving it, flying. It. Sorry, with the uh, the rocket launcher, yeah. the heat seeking right. rocket launcher, which is just a punctuation to how you end a movie. Mm-hmm. I think you end a you movie by shooting up. a fucking helicopter out of the sky. Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. This is what Cannon knew. Then you cut to credits. Yeah, you got to go well, no, immediately you, to credits. You cut to uh, him looking far off into the distance with a smolder, sure and then you go to credits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's surveying his yeah. uh, domain. Right? American Ninja. Have the you, American Ninja. Have you seen any of the other American Ninja? No, but uh, I hear that What, Ninja... you weren't convinced after this to go watch more? No. Okay. <laughs> because, but I'm, see, I'm not like you, Sean. I'm the guy who's like, the first one's probably the best, and you just don't keep going. You don't know that. That's how I, I am, too. I, I feel that. Thank kind of you. Yeah. But Sean here, if, if Sean had discovered American Ninja, he would have seen all five of them by now. I, lo- I would have at least seen the second one and been like, what if they do with the next one? I love Phantasm, and I've never seen one of its this sequels. Very never. True. So now, sometimes it's better just to stop at the first, you know, yeah, like I've that. already seen American the best Ninja. version of it. Your yeah. Curiosity not get the best of you. <laughs> I may actually check out American Ninja two uh-huh. at this point because I hear it's better than American Ninja one, which I can't believe. I could. How many times in history has the sequel been better than the original? Right. The odds plenty are not times. on your side. Plenty no, 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 not plenty of times. Plenty of times. No, no. Just because you like Rarely. sequels doesn't make that true. Plenty Rarely times. is no. the, yeah. Okay, so this is the guy who's like, you know, devoted to, you know, only certain franchises. But I mean, which is the best Scorpion King, Sean? <laughs> Scorpion King two, three? Just... What's the best death the best best death race? Death race. You don't know. Two Dragon days. Heart. You which think, one of those is the you think best? Scream two is better than Scream. I like Scream Two better. I didn't say it was better. But I like it better. You know, I like grumpier old men better. There you go. See? <laughs> Holly's on my side. Is that side. the one where it's summertime, right? Instead of winter, right? Because well, the first one's ice fishing, and the second one is... Uh, it's the is one like... where Walter Matthau is trying to get with uh, fucking Sophia Loren. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, right. yep. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. Wow. <laughs> it's funny. Change direction. Yeah, I know. From ninjas <laughs> to... like I'm like, Sophia what, Loren. Where are, yeah. Um, okay, so I uh, tell you what, listener. We want you to stick with us for a little bit longer, because we're going to answer some of your mail... 
And then we're going to go around the room and review and tell you if you should watch American Ninja. We don't know what all the uh, other folks here sitting at the table uh, think about this movie. Although they may have tipped you off. We're going to find out. Confirm it. After we have Igor bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail! So many letters, our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. What? Did I miss something? Uh, usually there's a bit more uh, a bit more to do with the calling of Igor. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, but I know. But I noticed that I, like, say I'm going to br- call Igor. And then call Igor. Right. And so that's what I was waiting for. Jump right past that's that. That's what I was waiting once. for. I'm just like, trying to streamline. I have to call so Igor. Igor. Thing. That's what yeah. I was waiting for. Okay. Conscious decision. So tell you what, listener, we want you to mail us so that Igor can bring us your mail and you can get a hold of us on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook.com slash I ain't freak show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email, Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. And on Instagram, at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, American Ninja. Maya Madsen writes in and says, I haven't seen this one, but I saw Revenge of the Ninja in the theater with my older sister when I was seven. I was traumatized by a guy getting stabbed through a, certain, uh, through a curtain by what I think was a back-flipping back granny and a guy catching a shuriken in the eye. I see that you can buy a triple feature of Rage of Honor, American Ninja, and Revenge of the Ninja on Blu-ray. That sounds like a fun night. I'm really I, curious about yeah, the circumstances I, in which all of that happens in that yeah. movie. Revenge of the Ninja. I'm telling you, I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do. Before we meet up again next week, American Ninja 2 and uh, Revenge of the Ninja. I got a week off. Do it. Uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the wall, he alerted us to the fact that Sam Furstenberg, Steve James are uh, added to the well, maybe Steve yeah. James to the mm-hmm. a little more from Steve James, but yeah. apparently also John Lamada, who played Ronaldo, that would be the, the general, the sergeant, He's sorry, the sergeant. uh, was also in Ninja Three, The Domination, and Break Into his Electric Boogaloo. Is that mm. a surprise because they're both directed by? Right. Does it say who he wasn't breaking to? I'm curious. Uh, his character's name was Policeman. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. There he was. Go. There was a lot of big montage dance with the whole town dancing. So That's in that true. movie, yeah. so he I'm was not, a mean policeman going, "Get off it, our lawn." <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if he, uh, if he really makes the, the yeah. hallway. The hallway, yeah. yeah. Maybe the hallway. The hallway. You can even advance from the hallway to the wall, depending. Yeah. 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 All right, so John relegated to the hallway of uh, yeah. of fame. Yeah. Uh, Simon Carter writes in and says, "The dude cough. Where would <laughs> canon have been without their ever reliable American Ninja series? Is it just me, or did Steve James always kind of steal the show? I watched the series up to number five, I think, and that's the one with Pat Morita in it. Then I was done." Uh-huh. I mean, you were done at the end after you watched them all. You yeah. were done. Yeah. You were done after they stopped after making you, them, after they stopped yeah. making them, you were done. Okay. Uh, Pat Morita gotcha. slumming it, huh? Wait until number five to show up. All right. Yeah, I don't know what year that was, but yeah. Was, yeah. After that, Karate Kid money ran out. Uh, the institute, <laughs> but there was what four of those? So yes. like, this must have been real, real low point for him. Well, then he made his comeback with the next Karate Kid. That's the fourth Karate Kid. That's what I'm saying. There's four yeah. of those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Institute for Advanced Taco Research writes in <laughs> and says, fucking Dudikoff, man. Dudikoff's in all caps. I got that. Dudikoff. I just That's a great name. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dom's 1982 says, uh, American Ninja is a beauty, but the second is a classic. Mm. Like one Take I know. for it. Uh, Novato Judoka writes in and says, I saw this for the first time a few months ago. Dudikoff tries to master the try and look cool and not care face the whole film yes, with his does. selected ninja amnesia. He says, I'll take the sequel over this, to be honest, or just watch him in Bachelor Party. Oh, to live in a time when ninjas were all the rage, no internet, and canon films were a source of top U.S. ninja movie quality. He says, fun fact, Steve James was set to be Jax in Mortal Kombat before he became ill. Oh, huh. interesting. That would good. That been cool. Yeah. Uh, Karate Warrior 2 says, can you throw in any more action movies with American titles? American yeah. Kickboxer? He says, I maintain that America, adding America onto the front of a title, 
is the equivalent of adding cop on the end of a title. Therefore, American <laughs> Cop should be the pinnacle oh, shit. of film. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so thanks to B-Movie post it we found out there is a American, American Cop, cop? Oh. but it's like the Owen Cop is the Russian hammer and sickle. And oh, it's that's like, horrifying. Oh. It looks okay. like... It's like an American cop goes to Russia. I don't know. It looked uh, interesting. Pretty that bad. That's a good observation. That that's a that is a fantastic SAT analogy. Yeah. Like right? <laughs> American Zombie is cop. to the front of a title as cop is to the back of a title. <laughs> yep. you know, yeah. It, so what else? Totally what works. Else you can make to... anything American and yeah. you can turn anything into a cop. Yeah. yeah. We got a fucking TV series called American Ninja Warrior that will never stop running. Yeah. That will be running yeah. for forever. Yeah. It's so. actually good. So I suggest an American Cyborg would be like an awesome title, but it turns out. That's got to exist. That does exist. You got mm-hmm. something that doesn't exist? Mm-hmm. Coors Light. No. Yeah. What can we call American? American what? American Terminator. Yeah. Uh, American Canine Cop. We got enough canine cop okay, movies. Fine. We yeah. don't need any more. All right, then. I tried. I tried Karate Warrior 2. Uh, about uh, Orca, the killer whale, which was the episode, our last episode. Mm-hmm. Simon Morgan writes in and says, uh, Orca is a weird fucking film with a better than the movie deserved score by Ennio Morricone. Mm-hmm. It's essentially Death Wish with an Orca instead of Bronson. <laughs> Hashtag Death Fish. Death fish. Oh, my oh my god. god. Why did we not? We didn't even think of that. Oh nice job. Death fish. Okay. That's, that's not a wonderful. Wonderful. That's wonderful. But that's, Death that's good. Fish. Death fish. Love but he's it. absolutely right. Uh, really Jacob Law says, I've always liked this movie. It has a pretty good Ennio Morricone score and some good death scenes. I always remembered the orca biting Bo Derek's leg. Yeah. Top five of the good Jaws ripoffs. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. man. Possibly. You were I mean, they go week. downhill really hard, you know, the yeah. Jaws rip well, Yeah, It's a steep drop off, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bob Taylor writes in and says, this was more like Moby Dick than Jaws. Bo Derek loses an appendage. That's the gist. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Richard Harris does get that Moby Dick obsession. Yep. Uh, John Gray says, I saw it on first release. I was 15. I loved it. The best thing about it, Ennio Morricone's incredibly beautiful soundtrack. It's great. Yeah, no. You like that song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love to dig. Writes oh, in cool. and says, I love that movie. It tried to ride on the coattails of Jaws and features a shark killed by killer whales in the early part of Jaws, a dead orca, Jaws 2, a dead orca killed mm-hmm. by a shark is found on a beach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we covered that on our episode, mm-hmm. but this was written before they had heard it. Uh, mm-hmm. Sheriff Gene Freak says, I've seen this more times than I care to admit. Richard Harris is really good as a disturbed and guilt ridden Ahab type, and Chief Broom from Cuckoo's Nest is at his as his dire warning filled guide uh but music is better than it should be too i love everyone. that everyone remembers the same two things about this movie. right yeah. the score is really good and there's a horrifying miscarriage scene. yeah like those are the only two things people remember right about this movie. Uh, about motel hell which was two weeks ago andrew john writes in and says i love this movie it came on tv when we were kids on vacation and it was the scene with the heads in the ground that scared the hell out of me yeah mm-hmm. as a kid that's terrifying mm-hmm. yeah yeah well thank you all for writing in yes thank yeah. you yeah i mean again you're added to the freak show family now Welcome. your names are going in the book mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the, the family tree the yeah. 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 it's the family them? tree the freak show family tree it's the tapestry we have hanging on the wall right. if you ever visit yeah. we'll bury you in the ground yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> uh well meat's meat and a man's gotta eat so uh now we're gonna go around the room we're gonna find out what everybody thought about tonight's movie american ninja starting with john what did you think of tonight's movie, American Ninja. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Ninja movies are not necessarily my they're not my jam. They're not my bag. So, um, <coughs> this movie had a disadvantage coming in for uh coming in tonight with me. Um, it was further disadvantaged when uh with Michael Dudikoff just staring at me for an hour and a half uh for this movie. Um, it's not um. I like a ninja movie if it's got something like weird going on with it. Like again, Ninja Three: The Domination, like that's a fun movie, and I like the elements of that one. But this one just didn't do. I don't know. It didn't do enough for me. Um, again, I'll never choose to directly watch a ninja movie, um, unless we come here tonight. So, uh, it didn't do enough for me. Um, I like Steve James. I want to see him. Like, I want to watch. What was he in Part Three? I want to see what he does in part three. Well, we got to see Avenging Force because that's a sequel 
to Invasion USA. Only Dudikoff plays the Chuck Norris part. Really? All right. Uh, I'm, this... I, I, I'll give that a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I was not convinced to watch more Dudikoff after tonight. Mm. Because Steve James is in it. But a, more Steve James would be fine. Like, yeah. I'm all down for Steve James. Um, but uh, I was not sold on American Ninja tonight. So apparently we should have watched the sequel. Everyone keeps recommending that one. <laughs> of um, course you're going to say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, sometimes I'm right and sometimes I agree. Um, but who knows? That could be just as uh, uh, not good as this one. Uh, I was not sold on American Ninja tonight, so I'm going to pass on this. Holly. Yeah, um, I do normally like ninja movies. I think they're fun. Um, and clearly I've brought many to the freak show. Um, but something about this one just fell short for me. I'm not quite sure what all it, cause it had, it had the bones there to be really, really good. It, it could have been really ridiculous, but it just didn't go far enough. Like you, you have to have really remarkable ninja skills or something really ridiculous or a combination of both for it to really work. And this just didn't really have enough of any of those things. You know, it had some good, it had some good moments. There was some, like we were saying, there was, there was a surprising amount of stabbing in this. Like there was some good explosions. There was a couple good bits that we enjoyed, but it overall, it just didn't, it didn't do it for me. I don't know. Um, I was like, I was actually really bored with this movie. Um, I think that was a big part of it. It just, even though there was a lot of, ac- you know, Colin was saying there's a lot of action in it, which there was a lot of action, but I, th- it, it just, it, it was boring. I don't know. I, c- I can't really put my finger on it because I feel like this should have been a fun movie. So, yeah, I think it fell short for me. I, I don't think I can recommend American Ninja, but I, I agree that Steve James was great. I, he was the best part of this movie. I was, he's, he's coming out of this clean. Yeah, if there had been more of him, I might have, I might have been okay with it. You love that yeah. scene where he like kicks the. There's a guy like with a M16 is going to shoot at the American Ninja. <laughs> Steve James kicks the gun out of his hand. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, buddy, it's okay." He he cool. <laughs> it's cool. 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 he wrecks a lot of people's nuts in this movie. Like, yeah, like a lot. Yeah, a nut grinding. In this yeah, movie. a lot. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Did, but, he, did he grab a dude in the night? Yeah, he did. He held on he to totally it for a while. Did. He did. I forgot he, about that. That was like his move. It's like a, che- it. it's was a cheater move. power move. move. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Not, so, not since Tammy and the T-Rex has there been a, a ball <laughs> grabbing scene <laughs> such as that. <laughs> oh my, if you have not seen it. I haven't. Shit. No, I haven't. Mm-hmm. It goes on for five Pieces. Minutes. Pieces has like the ultimate Does ball it? grabbing scene. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, doesn't it, she like pop them at the end? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. The... Oh. I don't know. I haven't seen Pieces. Oh, we you are here, here for it? No. Uh, oh, shit. shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. All right, we got off track. That's horrible. <laughs> we got off track. I can't, I can't recommend American Ninja. Michaela? Uh, I agree with a lot of what Sean said. Like, ninja movies are not my jam. It's just not something I grew up on. It's not something I gravitate towards. Uh, I've only seen them here, which has kind of been a lot actually within the past like year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I'm I'm noticing through lines with all of them. You have to be from a broken home. You have to be a white guy taught by a person of color, and it's 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 not for me. Uh, I, however, I hear canon, and I'm like, all right, well, this could get interesting, so let's give it a shot. Yeah. And I will say, like, I'm I'm surprised at the amount of choreographed scenes that are in this movie, especially for being a canon movie, because it. It seems like a lot for Canon to pull off. And they do do it. It just it's not something that interests me or that works for me. Uh Michael Dudikoff, man, watching that guy is like it re- reminds me of the first time I ever saw a James Dean movie because like James Dean has this like classic like masculine look and you hear him talk and you're like that's what he sounds like. Yeah. Holy shit, like That's a really good comparison. James Dean yeah. like I could not I was like why is this guy famous after watching like what I mean he was only right? in three movies and I understand right? why he was only in three movies now because like you listen to that guy talking it's like Well then he died. Like, I was like yeah, yeah. it's cuz it's cuz he died. Right, but like <laughs> he's better if you're only seeing him and not hearing him, you know. Yeah. I uh, get it myself. Yeah. But... Yeah. Man, you're that guy's voice. Me apart. Oh, okay. Yeah, honestly, wa- watching the room kind of retroactively <laughs> ruins Rebel Without a Cause if you it go does. back and watch it because you you're just seeing the Wiseauian influence. Yeah, but yeah, that this guy's voice is terrible, terrible. and you know he's really doesn't have like the confidence to be a leading man. It seems like, Mm-mm. um, 
So it's really not surprising he didn't take off. Uh, I, I, yeah, I can't recommend it just because it, it just didn't quite work for me. Colin. Yeah. All right, you guys are all crazy. This movie's <laughs> fucking awesome. This is the best <laughs> ninja movie that I've ever seen. Not oh, that, damn. again, that, I, well, yeah, I'm going to go there. Because not that I have dipped my toe very far into that pool, mm -hmm. but the ones I've seen, I've been like, eh, okay, there's ninja. I think it's because we were talking about earlier. When I was younger, there were there was a prevalence of ninjas in the culture. I grew up yeah. in that time that, uh, uh, sorry, ninja was it uh, uh, Johnny New Jersey? I think it was writing about when there was ninja <laughs> ninja on the brain yeah. and no internet and canon films delivered the goods. <clears throat> I had never seen this movie because I'm like, I didn't care at the time. I didn't care. Should have caught up with it recently. And I'm like, I think that this is a really solid action movie. And I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you guys. There's action Jackson. <laughs> there's, there's like, there's uh car chases and all that. And it's like, it's well done. It's just not up to, as we were talking about, it's not like a, a modern film, right. but there is a significant amount of like, get up and go with this movie, which I appreciated. It never like lags very long before there is some kind of like even small stunt, you know, you know, like we got to go out on a date Well, we're going to jump, uh, you know, jump through a window and yeah. At and, some point. Yeah. yeah and I mean, like the guy's a man of action. He's like, you know, yeah. When they're coming to capture him, he bolts through the plate glass window or whatever. I mean, like everybody's doing uh, stuff all through this movie to add, the 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 thought that you've seen like more probably than you actually have i don't know there's like a lot of uh, uh ninja stuff going on and i think you know uh as i was saying earlier the the that when i was a kid i dreamed of ninjas using all these gadgets and gizmos mm. and this one it just seemed to get like progressively more cooler as it went to to the time it uh climaxes with this gonzo all ninjas attack uh ending you know, where they are actually employing all this stuff. I know you guys are saying it took too long to get there. I didn't even expect that they were going to get there. So this was like, oh, they're actually doing it. <laughs> like <laughs> doing ninjas with all the gadgets and all this stuff that I've always wanted to see. The American Ninja finally gets in his like black uh, ninja garb and they're doing all this stuff. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I was sitting here tonight going like, you know, for a low budget movie, would you compare it with like Die Hard or something? You know, Die Hard changed the game, I think, like, you know, later. But or it doesn't have the budget of like the Rambo films or, you know, whatever for else from the 80s. But for a low budget uh, movie like this, uh, I thought it was like shooting above its weight class. They like, did a is, lot in this movie. I thought it was an above average. I guess this is what I'm saying. I thought it was an above average action movie from this, uh, you know, uh, era. And I think you should check it out. It's like, I thought it was fun. Uh, it like kept moving. Yeah. I was interested in what was going on. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, my read on it is, uh, you got to see American Ninja. No doubt. Maybe you have to <laughs> no see doubt. American Ninja. No too. doubt. <laughs> I don't know. I might see American Ninja too. I think you're going to. I think you're going to. I might. Yeah, that's much fun with this one. You're definitely going to watch part two. Yeah. I'm just afraid that it's going to suck. I know everybody's saying it's better. So I stand to be, this is, I guess, how I went into this one. Like, uh, okay, American Ninja. Actually, somebody recommended this to me. I think, like, you know, you should watch it. I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. and then I did, and it was like, oh, okay, all right. This might be the greatest ninja movie <laughs> ever. Um, although I haven't yeah. seen, I know that the, there are several um, Japanese movies uh, of very recently. Nin there's one called Ninja, then there's a Ninja 2. There might be a Ninja 3. I haven't seen any of them. I'm not sure if they starred Donnie Yen or... Uh, he might be in them not positive uh but uh yeah i think at least for the stuff that i've seen i'm gonna you know and I'll, I'll see more i'm sure in my lifetime but as of right now this is set the bar of what i expect from uh, a ninja movie american ninja there you go check it out so next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by sean what are what you are bringing we? next week uh, I think we're gonna go and revisit the Jurassic. We're going to watch Carnosaur. <laughs> oh boy! All right, Roger Corman produced Carnosaur. Carnosaur. Okay. All right. I've never seen it, so yeah, I've never seen it. Neither have I. Oh boy! Somebody <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> sent the trailer to us, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's going on the list." This came out like right after Jurassic Park or something. This is the Roger Corman doesn't have any money, but he's gonna. Make but he's it, gonna do it. He's gonna do it he's anyway. Make that movie. 
for a minute, I had a mild panic thinking you were saying Jurassic Park 3, and I'd be like, so oh, I won't be here next so week. I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sick. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm, I really thought that's where you were going. I was then. really yeah. worried. Yeah. I, was like, I, was I can't too. watch that movie. I, was well, like, Sean, I appreciate don't. that you went off the beaten path, path and picked a Saturday Night Freak Show kind of movie. Carnosaur. All right, well, there you go. Looks Carnosaur. like it's going to be good. We'll let you know next week. <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. So until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.